Hello, Dr. Ron England, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, deployment of Visual Studio projects. And actually, I'm specifically going to talk about deployment to Windows Azure, um, which is a web hosting environment, which does have, a, 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 I think, a 90-day, a nice free trial, three-month free trial, but is a relatively inexpensive hosting option that integrates really well with Visual Studio and .NET. Now, the standard ability to set up an Azure website and to actually publish to an Azure website is relatively straightforward. Um, if you, what you do is you come up here and you actually have this really easy ability to publish. And if you go to the Azure website and follow the step-by-step -step instructions, just publishing a website up to an Azure site is going to be relatively straightforward. And I really don't need to cover that in the lectures. I think most people can follow the instructions there. But it gets a little bit more complex when you actually need to connect to a database. So we need to talk a little bit about connection strings and the concept of connection string transformation. First, um, if you're going to be using connection strings from code that are going to connect to a database, you need to access those connection strings the correct way. So what I have here is a project. And if I go to the uh, web config in my project, I have two connection strings in this project. One's called default connection, and the other one's called object database. And each of those is going to have a connection string, which is over here, that long string that describes how to get to it. Um, the default connection is actually used for my membership provider. That's what keeps track of my users and roles. And my object database is where I'm storing my actual data from my objects that I'm actually keeping, it, that I'm using in the in this application itself. So I've got these two databases, and they're both SQL Server databases, and you can use SQL Express or SQL Server, it really doesn't matter. But the important thing here is that I've got two databases that I want to connect to. So if I come over here to where I'm actually accessing one of these databases by code, now the membership provider is really handled in internal code, and if you use the objects for roles and membership providing that are built into .NET Framework, you're not going to have to necessarily worry about that connection. It uses the default connection. You can change that, and those are all options, and that's all done through the web config. But right here, we're really going to look at, I'm, I've got this other database that I created to store the objects that I want to store, and it is called Object Database. Now, to get that configure, to get that connection string, um, and, and the connection string is just used to actually make a connection to SQL. I'm going to use the configuration manager object. And that is part of um, the namespace system.configuration. So if you're going to use a configuration manager, you do need to use system.configuration. And it's relatively straightforward. I use a configuration manager, then I uh, use the connection strings, which the configuration manager is capable of returning multiple connection strings and I'm going to access connection strings by and I can do it by index I'm going to do it by name which is object database and then return the actual connection string itself which is a string that is part of those connection strings because there's different properties to the connection strings that you can return but the connection string itself is a property that you want and in that case I create a new SQL connection using that connection string and I then access the database with that so You've hopefully used connection strings before, and this is something that is fairly useful to you. Now, realize this project is running on my local computer, connecting to a local SQL Server instance that I have here. But what if I want to deploy this? Okay, if I want to deploy it, I have to. I'm going to have a different database that's going to connect to, not the one on my local machine. Well, um, deployment has that ability built in. So the first thing we're going to look at is that concept of transformation of your configurations. So if you go to the web config and you've actually set up the ability to deploy from Visual Studio to Azure or any of the other possible hosts, but if you set for automatic publishing, so you'd have so in that case you'd be able to right click here and say publish, okay, you will go ahead and you will have these other web configs in here and we're going to look at this one called web release web.release.config so in here in web release.config what it has is the ability to say you know what you're going to need to change the connection string on your local computer with the connection string 
to the remote computer when you deploy. Now, there's ways to do this. You can just send the files out there and then go and do it by hand. Just change the connection strings, go into the web config, take one out, put the other one in. Or another technique that I use is I actually may have all the connection strings within the web.config and then I just tell it which one I want it to use by changing the names around. But this is basically a transformation of your web configs. The web.release.config says, I can take this object database. This is the connection string that I use both remotely and locally. It's always called object database. And I'm going to replace the local connection string when I deploy this, when I publish it, with this connection string. Now, there's a few things that are important about that connection string. One is how do you get it? Now, on Windows Azure, you have the ability to get it by actually asking Windows Azure where to get that from. Now, I do two things when I actually do this. Now, I'm going to deploy these to this site, and I do have the new connection string in there. When you get the connection string, you need to go through it, and um, there is a little piece of code that you do need to grab from this. I'm going to go ahead and pull it here. Okay, I'm going to pull this back. In those connection strings, you need to add multiple active result sets equals true. Multiple active result sets equal to true to those connection strings. Okay, so that's just an addition to that. But let me show you a couple of other things. Now, that's going to transform that connection string when you actually publish the website. Now, I actually do two things when I publish to Azure. I do that, but I also set up the configuration in the location of where I'm deploying it to. And what I mean by that is, is okay, so here is a website I'm going to deploy something to. In the dashboard for my website, I have dashboard monitor and I have configure. Configure is something you definitely want to take a look at because it allows you to choose the .NET framework, different versions that you're going to have here. But I also have the ability to set specific connection strings. And if you notice, I've got default connection and object database. Those are the two connection strings that I have that I'm going to deploy there. And I it's hidden right now, but I can actually show them. If I say show connection strings, it's got those connection strings right there. Um, and I can paste those in there, make sure all the settings are correct. And now I'm not positive which one of these overrides. I believe that if I bring the connection string over with the transformation, it actually transforms it. And that is the connection string that's sitting in the web config on the deployed website. And this connection string also looks for that. But the two connection strings should match between web config and here. So I actually do both when I do deployments. I set the connection string within the configuration manager, which you do should actually be able to look at the configuration of a website in Azure, okay, and be able to look at the different settings that you have. Like some of the settings which are important are, you know, default.htm, default.htmn, default.asp, default.aspx. That's the actual precedence order of which it's going to look for the page that it goes to by default. So that's kind of an important thing. Now, one more other thing here. If I'm in Azure's manager right here and I go to the databases, click over here to DBs, whoops, um, SQL data, SQL, not SQL, I don't want SQL report, SQL, SQL databases, right there. Here's the two databases. I created both of those. That is also an exercise I will leave to the user. Creating a database in Azure is not tremendously difficult, but once you get into the database itself, you have the ability here to actually pull the connection strings, which will show up here in a little bitty window here. And there's the connection string. Just remember, it says your password here. You've got to change that to your password here. But it has it for the different uh, environments that you might need to connect through. So you're connecting through ADO.NET, and there's the connection string that you would actually use in ADO.NET to connect to it. So that's how you actually get that connection string. And once you create, there's a few things that you might want to have once you create your database within Azure. You may need to go in and actually do some of the design work, which means that you'll need to go ahead and log in to your database. I am going to do that just to show you what this manager looks like. It's actually quite handy and useful manager. Okay, this is actually the SQL database, um, our Eaglin that I'm connecting to. 
and I have a little manager, I have a list of tables, views, but I have an actual query window where if I need to like create table, okay, it's a SQL window. You can put the create table right in there. You can go ahead, once you've done it, you can hit run and it will execute that SQL. It has some ability for administration and design tools. It's a relatively straightforward and easy tool to work with. Okay. By the way, also you can connect using SQL Management Studio. You can connect to an Azure database on the Azure site and manage it that way. So hopefully you've seen connection strings, how to use multiple connection strings, how to set them up for deploying in there. Now when I want to publish my website, I simply go over here. I right click, I, do, I look at the publish. I can also look at the different settings. By the way, there's, you notice there's the two connections that I had. Okay. Um, and I can even have it update the database by configuring, basically putting, pushing the new update up there too. So you can look at the different settings that you have here also and work with them. This is the concept of publishing. Once you've got everything set, you hit publish, up it goes, and your website should be set up to run. So hopefully this was useful for those people that are looking at deploying to um, Azure or just working with the deployment capability of databases within Visual Studio. There's a lot of options here, but today we really wanted to cover that concept of connection string transformation. Thank you very much. Good programming.